Did you know your state government spends your money on trips to exotic locales? Cars made in foreign factories by foreign workers? On six-figure pensions? And clowns. Yes, clowns. With us here to talk about this is Fergus Cullen. He is with the Yankee Institute of Public Policy. Fergus, nice to see you here again. Thank you. It's been a while since you worked for Governor Rowland many, many years ago. Uh, I want to ask you, first of all, what made you decide to put this list together, which is on your website via ctsunlight.org? Sure. We built a website, ctsunlight.org, where we put every dollar of state government expenditures online, searchable, downloadable. Every state employee salary, every state retiree's pension, every vendor payment by every state agency or department. We believe that transparency, disclosure, sunlight puts downward pressure on spending that in turn keeps taxes low were these numbers readily available I mean or did, or did the departments have to you know give them over to you kicking and screaming well you know it's public information but it's not really readily available we did a massive Freedom of Information Act request of the state comptroller's office they were very great to work with they're very collaborative and cooperative so the data comes straight from the state pay checkbook uh, just like you might have at home but it took us uh, some six months to manipulate the data and format it and put it online in a way that is, again, searchable and downloadable. And I imagine the interest is very high now because unemployment is high. A lot of people are out of jobs. They're watching what the state is spending. There's a lot of criticism of the, of the budget crisis and all that. So let's look at some of these things that you learned here. Let's begin with some uh, payroll figures and some pensions. And in 2008, you learned that more than 1,100 state employees actually earned more than the governor who makes $150,000. I want to ask you, first of all, uh, is this unusual for states? Well, you know, the governor's salary at $150,000 is pretty good money to most people. And to think that there are more than 1,000 state employees who are paid more than the governor, I think that's eye-opening to a lot of folks. And In I'm in, sorry. Fact, in fact, 13 people are paid more than a half a million dollars a year. 13 state employees earn more than a half a million dollars a year. And 71 earned more than 300,000. Let's talk about some of the folks who do make more than half a million. Who are they? Well, they're all employed by either UConn or the UConn Health Center, and I think that's significant. And several of them may, in fact, be, you know, multiple PhDs and people that we're glad to have and that we have to compete with the private sector in order to keep on in service to the state. But the top three payroll people are the UConn UConn men's basketball coach, the UConn football coach, and the UConn women's basketball coach, each of whom are paid more than a million dollars a year. And in their defense, their salaries are in line with other universities? Well, that's true, but they are the highest paid state university coaches in New England. All right, let's, uh, let's, now that's Jim Calhoun makes more than 1.5 million, 10 times what Governor Earl makes right now. Let's talk about some pensions. 175 retired state employees collect pensions of more than 100 thousand dollars a year now again is this unusual do other states do this well people in the private sector would find this very unusual there aren't a lot of pension plans yeah. these days people <laughs> might have 401ks if they're lucky they probably have IRAs if they're smart planners but to have a hundred thousand dollar pension as a hundred and seventy five retired state employees do is unusual uh, forgive my ignorance when it comes to pensions does a person get a pension for the rest of their life yes the, so they retire at 60 that's right. The state has a defined benefit plan. That is to say, you retire, you get that, and in fact, you've got COLAs, uh, cost of living adjustments, built right into that as well. And this doesn't even get to health care benefits or the other kinds of pension benefits people have. This is straight salary benefits. So if this person retires at age 65 and lives to be 95, which is not unusual in this day and age, that's 30 years of a $100,000 year pension for the rest of your life. Well, and in fact, it's going to go up with, yeah. with COLAs. Yeah. And, and they can also work. And some do. I mean, it's possible to retire as early as 45. You may not start drawing your pension. And listen, we're not, in, we're not against state employees. We're not in fa against uh, the contracts that they've negotiated. But it's out of line compared to those available to the private sector. And just about a year ago, the governor announced a travel ban on state employees. Yet you learned that last year, state employees stayed at nearly 1,000 hotels across the country and the world, costing over $600,000 in 2009. And these include 101 hotels in Florida, 10 in the Caribbean, Nine in Las Vegas, even one in Hawaii. What would they be doing in the Caribbean? Do we know? <laughs> well, Aware? you know, maybe it's a conference. I mean, again, allegedly we've had a, a ban on out-of-state travel because of the budget problems that are facing the state, and yet we have more than almost a thousand different hotel stays by state employees around the country over that same time frame. This doesn't count airfare. This doesn't count meals and all that. So uh, something's going on there. And we're talking Jamaica? Uh, there is one in Jamaica. There are at least uh, nine, we believe, in Las Vegas. 
All right, Connecticut Department of Correction hired Huggles the Clown for $600. A lot of people are going to be talking about this. What, what is the prison department doing with a clown? You know, somebody in the Department of Corrections thought it would be a good idea to spend 600 taxpayer dollars to hire a clown for a staff <laughs> Christmas party. $600? So, How know, long was she there, do we know? Uh, I don't know that. And listen, Huggles is an entrepreneur. She got a gig. It's not her fault. Uh, but nonetheless, this is your taxpayer dollars at work. $1,200 on New York Yankees tickets. As a Red Sox fan, I, I know that personally bothers you. But what would they be doing for that? And 900 of the Celtics. Well, you know, we're not exactly sure. But this is part of why we wanted to bring sunlight and disclosure to how your tax dollars are spent. I and mean, there's a budget. The budget is published. But it really doesn't tell you where your money goes. Attorney General's office. This is this number is staggering 5.1 million dollars on attorneys fees this department is filled with attorneys why would they have to go to private law firms and spend over five million dollars that's a good question maybe you ought to ask the attorney general but it is over five million dollars to attorneys at private law firms and the state subscribes to the book of the month club the Department of Veterans Affairs. Do we know where these books are going and what books they are? We don't, but you probably didn't know that your tax dollars are going to a subscription to the Book of the Month Club. And as we look at a lot of these departments, uh, you know, one thing that, that it doesn't break it down, but we know that they're buying Toyota Priuses, foreign cars made in foreign factories. Is that surprising for tax money? That I mean, shouldn't they buy? You know, I know Congressman Chris Murphy's been pushing for local products and American products. But, well, and, and now you know. I mean, we found all sorts of things. And you can go to this website, ctsunlight.org, and search by vendor. And you can search by category, and it'll tell you all the ones. How much is the state paying on pool supplies and maintenance? How much did the state spend at Carbella's? How much did the state spend at Dunkin' Donuts? Now we know. What has the reaction been? Have you heard any heard back from any lawmakers? Well, uh, we've heard from some. Uh, one pointed out that, you know, with all the clowns in Hartford, they really didn't need to go out and hire somebody <laughs> else. Uh, we've heard from some state employees, and, you know, state employees are part of the solution to this because yeah. they know better than anybody how the dollars are spent. Now, we've got Google Analytics on the site, and yeah. it tells us what domains visit ctsunlight.org, and I can tell you that the state of Connecticut is by far the number one domain. <laughs> we suspect it might be state employees taking a look at what people are making. Yeah, and there are some people in the state who do not make a lot of money. There the are the vast majority who do not, and so you know they're concerned about it as well. Absolutely, but you know we know we've got UConn students looking up what their professors are making. And listen, salary voyeurism is a feature of the site. But what we're trying to do is bring attention to how much the state government spends. You know, in this recession, the private sector has shed tens of thousands of jobs, but the public sector has not. And part of why we wanted to point out is that, you know, Connecticut state employees are the second highest paid on average in the country behind only California. What would you like to see done as a result of your website? Do you want to see changes? Well, first of all, we'd like to get out of the business. We'd like the state to proactively provide this information for citizens so a private group like ours at the Yankee Institute doesn't have to do it. Other states, including Texas and South Carolina, do put this information online so everyone can see. Fergus Cullen, thank you for joining us here in snowy Connecticut. It would be nice if we could take faces state on the road to the Caribbean this time of year, wouldn't it? <laughs> nice right. to see you, sir. Don't forget, I am on Facebook and Twitter. You can follow Face the State there by going to our website, WFSB.com or Facebook.com forward slash Dennis House WFSB. We're going to read some of your viewer emails when we come back after this commercial timeout.